Well, for months here in AEW, we were told by Evil Uno that the Exalted One was on his way, that the Exalted One would arrive. Do I address you as the Exalted One, Mr. Brody Lee? What? It's Mr. Brody, Tony. Mr. Brody. There's no, no question that you have made a profound impact on AEW since your arrival. Is this, this is what you were at, wanted to do? Have you, is this have, what I wanted to do? Why does one come to AEW, Tony? To be successful? To be successful. To be powerful. Is right. that not what I have done? Oh, no, you've, you've done that. So wouldn't you say that's what I wanted to do, Tony? So you have, you've done what you wanted to do. Have I answered your question? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. Okay. Tell me about the Dark Order. The Dark Order is an organization that enriches lives. It makes lives extraordinary. It makes winners out of losers. The Dark Order right now is 5-0 and in the tag team division. Right. The Dark Order right now, me, is undefeated in singles competition. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. So maybe that's what the Dark Order is, Tony. It's an organization with a wonderful leader that comes from the top down. And we make everything better. We enrich lives, Tony. But not a cult, right? Just to get that out there? Okay. So you're enriching lives and... Who the f does he think he is? We told him not to use that word. Do you understand me? My time is valuable. And you just wasted a whole bunch of it. Never, ever again. Yo. Hey, Dallas. Yeah, I just... Just come around the back. Just come around the back. Grab your chair. Mm. Hurting a little, huh? A little bit. Did you get to watch it? Yep. I got it. I saw it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did my best. Tried. Let's watch it. Again? Dude. I used to watch my matches over and over and over again. That's how you learn. Think of it as game films. Especially when I got my ass kicked. All right. Let's watch it. Oh! Athleticism of Archer. Cover. Over the what? cover. Whoa. The QT kicks out. He's a professor Whoa. wrestling's biggest ex-quarterback. Well, what I was trying to do... Stop. Stop. Oh, my God. Not on the apron. No! On that hard part mm. of the apron. Yeah, Dallas, it felt like I broke my ribs. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know if I could wrestle. You're going you're to tape them. That's what you're going to do. I'd say don't be a girl, but... The girls are tougher than all the guys. So, don't be a That's his meal ticket. There's big money for Jake Roberts. If the oh, most oh, oh, oh. I don't, I honestly don't remember anything after this. Blackout. Blackout oh. by Archer. The deal is I don't need to watch any more of that. So, you went to the top rope, why? I, I only have one win in AEW in a singles match. So that's your finish, going to the top rope? Do you see the top rope guys AEW has? Guess what? You ain't one of them. You're still a ground warrior. Yeah. Figure something else out. Come back when you have a real finish. Because a real finish will change your life. All right? Thanks, Dallas. I appreciate it. Work on it. Now that we're becoming reacquainted, let's take a moment to set one thing straight. TH2 are not delusional, but to the contrary, you can take everything that we say as fact. For example, we are the conquerors and conjurers of a unique style of hybrid lucha libre. Fact. There exists a conscious bias and favoritism within AEW. Fact. And we never lost to private party. Fact. Private party. Don't even say that name. It's heresy. We did not lose 
anyone can go back and check, your shoulder was clearly up with the visible range of the official, but it was purposely ignored by that painful banal bum Bryce the reject referee, giving a win to those unscrupulous, unsavory, undeserving, unknown underdogs who now lovingly live a lascivious lifestyle. Drinking in excess with super sucky celebrity seeker fans are probably all together right now. Sing and imagine just to perk up us piss poor peasants, which is particularly puzzling because the popular perception is they just pass pedantically porous people who aren't prominently paid persons or who don't promptly or properly pick up pernicious political propaganda and I won't have it. These heretics desire remission from sin. We shall purify their malfaction with our exonerating flame. The heretic shall burn in helico or at least feel the burn in their colon as the alcohol soaked livers ejected from their body via the meteoric impact of a 630 blow in their ass out blood bile and all you know how we have to handle this and helico by knockout by a pinfall or by submission the heretic of last month and the hedonist alike shall be cleansed of their sin of uselessness vengeance is ours and helico we shall repay and repay we will because it is our duty to the world to show that when it comes to talent there are many when it comes to the best there are few but when you talk about the greatest then there's only t h two Hey everyone, Jen Decker here with your Road to Double or Nothing update. This is our final episode of Dynamite before Saturday night's Double or Nothing pay-per-view, and it promises to be an action-packed fight card. Last week, Orange Cassidy was brutally attacked when he took a dragon kick to the face from Ray Phoenix during Best Friends' match against Jurassic Express. While it's been almost two months since we've seen Ray Phoenix in action, he wasted absolutely no time picking up right where he left off with the trio. Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. have made a name for themselves around the world. We've got Orange Cassidy along with Chuck Taylor and Trent, the best friends. I have not figured out Orange Cassidy yet. Luke Bros are about as good as you can get anywhere. Hands on the pockets and ties on the pile. Ray Phoenix, oh, the hook kick. Now Chuck Taylor going over the top. Oh, the brutalizer. And Cassidy forced to tap. No other choice. We are Death Triangle. And now the Lucha Brothers and Pack picking up right where they left off at Revolution. Nobody is safe. But Death Triangle out to make a statement here. And something tells me it's not over yet. Oh, no. Far from over. Oh, my! What the hell's that? That was Ray Phoenix. He kicked his head right off. Ray Phoenix just leveled Orange Cassidy. The two are now set on a collision course in Saturday's casino ladder match, but first, they'll meet in singles competition this Wednesday night on TNT. Meanwhile, in more fallout from the Best Friends Jurassic Express match, Marco Stunt is set to take on MJF this Wednesday after Max's henchman Wardlow threw Marco against a barricade. And while this is the first time Stunt has faced MJF and AEW, the two have encountered each other before on the indie circuit, specifically AAW and Glory Pro, with Marco actually getting the victory at the latter. I know everyone always discounts Marco because of his size, but you can't deny the kid's durability. He can take an absolute beating, get up, and be perfectly fine. That's the purpose of being 23 years old. However, MJF will try and make an example out of Marco, and since he won't have Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus in his corner, Marco's odds don't look ideal. Regardless, Jungle Boy will get his shot at Maxwell Jacob Friedman next Saturday at Double or Nothing, and if their match back in February was any indication, we are in for an absolute barn burner. Tune in this Wednesday for these matches and more, including Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. Also Wednesday night, Arn Anderson and Jake the Snake will come face to face before the American Nightmare Cody and Lance Archer clash at this Saturday's pay-per-view with the TNT Championship on the line. Double or Nothing is available on all major cable and satellite providers, Bleacher Report Live, and Fight TV for our international fans. Until then, I'll see you this Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, only on TNT. Everybody seems to love you, Happy Jack. Everybody's favorite, quiet, brooding little hero. The underdog, right? And I mean, who doesn't love an underdog story? David vs. Goliath. Rudy. Buster Douglas vs. Mike Tyson. Since the dawn of time, people have loved hearing stories like this. Because who doesn't want to see the underdog get their just due, right? Good stuff. But I abhor you 
AEW wrestling faithful. Not everyone is as they seem. Some people portray themselves as the beach, when in reality, they're quicksand. You know, I'm just a very inquisitive guy, so I can't help but ask you, Jack Perry, what exactly makes you an underdog? Born into money and fame, beguiling good looks, incredibly attractive, long flowing dirty blonde hair, a freak athlete, total chick magnet, have all the it factor in the world and to top it off you are clearly the breakout star in that quartet of yours of, let's be honest here, play wrestlers. And all of it just seemed to fall smack dab in your lap. So I ask again, what makes you the underdog and me the big, bad, mean bully? Well, if you ask the internet, Marks, they'll tell you it's because you're humble. <laughs> humble. And I'm a braggart. When in reality, you have had everything handed to you on a silver platter since birth, and to make matters worse, your silence help you masquerade as if you're one of them when you clearly are not. Jackie boy, me and you, we're one and the same. Except the only solitary difference is I'm not afraid to tell the world who I am. I'm the best. I'm the guy who's going to be single-handedly leading the future of professional wrestling forward. And I don't have to be fake humble in order to do so. And I damn sure don't have to be fake humble in order to be the better wrestler. And at double or nothing, Jackie boy, I will out-wrestle you. And I will quell all the chitter chatter that me and you are on the same level. Because we are not! And then, Dino Douche and your vertically challenged friend Marco's stunted growth can throw your mangled body on a plane back to beautiful California, where you will retire and you will hang your head in shame, living off of Daddy Dearest's inheritance money until your dying days. And every time you see me on your TV set, it will be a constant reminder that I'm better than you. And you know it. <sighs> the mystery of the exalted one's identity was not on my radar at all. I was, however, excited to see Brody Lee because he's a world-class competitor. He's dangerous. He's top of the food chain. He's been proving it all over the world for years. I wanted to see what he would do in AEW. So as much as I'm pissed off, I'm actually a little bit more disappointed that you've chosen to go this route. You've chosen to go the gang beat down route. You've chosen to surround yourself with a bunch of creepy dudes and wearing socks on their heads. Don't you have any more respect for yourself than that? To surround yourself with these idiots? I just got done running through every single member of the inner circle one by one, getting jumped every single week, getting my eyeballs stabbed out, getting thrown off the stage by three or four guys. I'm pretty used to getting overwhelmed by numbers. You know why I've been running roughshod over professional wrestling for a year? Because I refuse to lose. When I go to the ring, I know I'm going to win, or I'm not walking out of the ring. The best I can do as world champion in these circumstances is be an example of refusing to lose.